Hello, let's continue our Sudoku adventure with Wasabi Doritos by Randall. So Randall made this puzzle in celebration that it is his 50th puzzle for the adventure series. So his first puzzle was called A Crop Key Adventure, and it was puzzle number five from January 24th, 2023. So Randall's been with us from the very start. So thank you, Randall, for providing 50 puzzles to Sudoku Adventure. That's... uh. That's a little around 10% of all the puzzles created by Randall, which is awesome. All right. So, and Randall will continue to be setting in the future, of course, but this is a nice celebration. Randall has informed me that this is a bit more difficult than the usual Sudoku Adventure Fair and asked for my permission to do so for uh, celebrating his 50th. And I thought, hey, why not? All right. So uh, let's go over the rules. So we have normal six by six Sudoku rules, which means in every row, every column, and every two by three box. We are placing the digits one to six exactly once each. We also have these green lines in the grid, the wasabi Dorito lines. <laughs> uh, these are German whisper lines. So adjacent digit al digits along the line have to have a difference of at least three. So if this was, say, a two, this could be five or six. Those are the only two digits it could be because all other digits are not at least three away from two. And then let's say this was a six, then this cell would have to be a one, two, or three because it needs to be at least three different from six. Now, obviously, it couldn't be a two because of Sudoku in this particular case, but the German Whisper line actually doesn't care. What cares is Sudoku. So just thought I'd distinguish that. All right. In addition to that, we do have this singular black dot here. These two digits uh, have a one to two ratio. So one of them is exactly double the other. We don't know the order, but say this was a two. Say we knew this was a two. This could be one because two is double one, or this could be a four because four is double two. And that's it. Those are the rules. There's a link in the description if you'd like to try the puzzle yourself, and I'm going to get started right now. Well, my initial thought is this seems like a coloring puzzle. Um, there's sort of the concept of low highity with German Whispers. It's kind of a, an em emergent property that's very much intentional in the difference chosen for German Whispers, which is why the difference changes with grid size. If you were doing a 9x9, nine nine, the difference would be 5. Now, the reason for that is we want to be bridging the gap between low digits and high digits as we alternate along the line. So let's say this digit happened to be a one, two, or three. We don't know which, but it happened to be a one, two, or three. We call that low. One, two, three are low, and four, five, six are high. We split it evenly, uh, low and high. Now, the reason we would say this is low is because this digit now would have to be high, because you cannot subtract three or more from any of these digits. We would end up with zero or lower, which isn't in, Sudo in this Sudoku. So um, we have to add three. And as soon as we add three or more, we end up at least four, because one plus three is four. So we end up in the four, five, six range. Now from four, five, six, we can't add three. So we're going to subtract three. So we end up in the one, two, three range again. So you'll notice that we alternate as we move along the line. We alternate low and high. Now we don't know that this is low, right? This could be four, five, six, which would then make this one, two, three, and this four, five, six. But my point is that these two are going to be the same low highity, and this is the other one. So I'm immediately seeing that that's not necessarily immediately useful for this, but it is immediately useful for this pattern here. Because if you think about it, one, two, three, that's three digits. Four, five, six, that's three digits. So we're going to have three lows and three highs in every row, column, and box. I'm going to just mark these two green and mark this purple. Green, purple, green. Green means whatever this is. Whether it's low or high, that's what green represents. And whatever then this is, is the other. So just starting from this cell here, right? Just whatever this ends up being in our solution, it will be a one through six. If it's if it happens to be one, two, or three, that means green is low. If it happens to be a four or five, six, that means green is high. And so then this has to be the opposite. We have to switch to the other one, and then this is back to the same. So we can use green to represent one low high ID and purple to represent the other without knowing which is which yet. We just know they're different. Now think about these two. They have to be the same, low highity. But if we made them green, then we would have four greens in this column. We just said that there are only three of each. So actually, these have to be purple, and that makes this one green. All right. Now I'm seeing in this box, we have two purples. Yep, and the, these have to be the same, right? So if these are the same, they're not going to be purple. We'd have four purple. So these are green, and that makes this purple. All right, we can just keep going, right? These are both purple. This here, we're, we're going to be using these ends of the Doritos a lot because <laughs> they're the same, right? So these can't be purple, so they have to be green, and that makes this purple. And actually, the rest of the box has to be purple because we have three greens already. 
Uh, here, this column we can finish with a purple. This column we can finish with a green. This is one of each, but we don't know which is which yet. All right, anything else of note? Um, oh, this is purple, so this is green, and this is purple. Okay, I know that these are different. But do, do I know their color? Oh, I do know their color, this row. So these are both purple, which makes this purple and this green. If these are both purple, these are both green. That's purple. Um, these are the same. Let's see, what do we do from here? Oh, I have three purples here. That's easy. So there's two greens here then. Oh, the box as well. I just got to scan this properly. That's all. This column now finishes with a purple, which makes these both green. Three greens in this box makes these both purple. Now this has to be green for the row, and this has to be purple for the row or the box. This is green for the row, and now this is purple, and we, we fully colored. All right, so now we know how our low highs split up. We just don't know which is low, which is high yet. Okay, so now I think what we're going to need to do is think about individual digits. Now, I'm going to be talking about 1, 6, 2, 5, and 3, 4. So if you think about it, once, uh, once I'm just going to arbitrarily pick this. This I'm not saying these are it, but I'm just going to say in every row, column, and box, you're going to have three greens, and they're going to be a one six, a two five, or a three four. They're either going to be one two three, or they're going to be four five six, right? And we group them this way because if you think about it, one and six behave basically the same as each other, because from one and six you can have any other of the opposite next to it. This if this was one six, this could be the one six, the two five, or the three four. But from two five, you've now eliminated three four as an option from this cell. Right? You can't you can't go from two to four or from five to three. They're both two different from each other. So you end up with this being one, two, five, six only. And then from three four, this is the key one, from three four, you can only go to one six. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. You can only go to one six. Um, because any other digit, it, the, the two, five or the, or another three, four would be too close. So that's why we would split up the German whisper into those three groups. Now, one thing you may notice is that means this cannot be three, four, because that would make both of these one, six. And so they both be one or they both be six. Let's think about three individually, right? If this was a three, the only digit that can go with three is six. So these would both be six and that breaks Sudoku. If this was a 4, the only digit that can go with 4 is a 1, and that breaks Sudoku. So this cannot be 3, 4. And in fact, no, I'm going to actually do that. None of these sort of Dorito ends, the, the, the pivot of all the Doritos, can be a 3, 4, because they all have two digits that see each other on the other end. I did not mean to click. Now I have to click all these again. All right. So these can't be 3, 4. So I'm actually going to mark these as 1, 2, 5, 6 to no denote that they're not 3, 4. Okay, so I'm seeing I'm seeing a few of these, but you can see that this is going to be either a 1-2 pair or a 5-6 pair. The, the question is, where's the green 3-4, right? We need a green 3-4 in this column. It ends up here. That's 3-4. And that makes these the 1-2-5-6. This has to be the purple 3-4 for the box, which makes these a 1-2-5-6. Um, this has to be a purple 3-4 for the column. That makes this 1-2-5-6. This is a 3-4 for the row. Makes this 1-2-5-6. You're either 3-4 or you're not 3-4. There's one, three, four per row column box of each color. That's kind of my point. Um, there's a three, four up here somewhere. Okay, so if we know that one of these is a three, four, that means this has to be a one, six, because it will be next to a three, four. So two, five is too close to three, four. It has to be one, six. So now we can say that these are not one, six. These are, oops, these are two, five. So I don't, nine, oh no, nine appeared in my puzzle. So now we have a two, five and a three, four. So this has to be one, six. Same for the box. Um, this is our three, four purple. So this is one, six. Uh, what else can we do here? I'm going to ignore the black dot for now. I think we can do more labeling here. Uh, is there, is there a low hanging fruit here? I'm not seeing three, four, three, four, two. over here. These can't be one, six. So these are two, five, three, four. I wonder if I have, if I can ignore the dot. Let's see if we can just for a second here. Can I spread this any further? One of these is a 3-4, but both of these can be 1-6. In fact, one of them is 1-6, so that goes with the 3-4, which is a good insight, but not immediately useful. 
Ah, this 1 6 sees down, making this not 1 6. So this is 1 6. So this is also 2 3 4 5, because it can't be 1 6. And I, again, I'm ignoring the black dot just for another moment here to see if I can spread this any further, because it's fun. Um, I may have to start using the black dot. Is there anything else I can say about this? Okay, so let's talk about the black dot, right? You can never put a five on a black dot. If you try to put a five on a black dot, you'd have to have it to two and a half. That doesn't exist in this puzzle. Or you'd have to double it to 10. That doesn't exist. So no fives. So that's not a five. So this is either going to be a two doubled to four. We cannot go to one because those would both be low. And we know these are different parodies. So two would go to four, three would go to six, and four would go to two. Now, is there anything I know about these? that aren't possible. It's kind of interesting how that limits. I need a purple 2-5. This, oh, it could be here, actually. Three, this could be, hmm. Okay, I, I am missing something. I don't think the black dot was enough. One, six, two, five. Um, feels like I should be able to do more with purple, but I don't see it. One of these is 3, 4. One of these is 3, 4. One of these is 3, 4. That's how we got the 1, 6. Do we have any other... Anything else like that? Th we know this is 2, 5. Right. So these can't be 3, 4, because this can't be a 1, 6. So this is 3, 4. If this is the green 3, 4, this cannot also be the green 3, 4. So it can't be 4. That's interesting. 2, 6 is not one of our like options that we normally are using, right? But if this can't be 4, this can't be 2. So this is the purple 3, 4. Interesting. So these cannot be the purple 3, 4. Okay. Can I do more with this? This is the purple 2, 5, so this is not. Which means this is the purple 2, 5, this is not. All right, and so this is a purple 3-4, which then has to go with a 1-6 on a German Whisper. So this is not 1-6. So this has to be the green 1-6 for the box. It can't be 1, again, because if it was 1, this would be a 2, and they'd both be low. So this is 6, and that means our green is high. So I'm actually going to take all our greens, and I'm going to make them orange, because I'm used to orange being high. And I'm going to take all our purples, and I make those blue, because I'm used to blue being low. And so now every, every orange... I can just take, if there's only one high option, I can take it. So this is six, this is four, this is five. In any blue, I can take the low option, one, two, and three. This is three, this is two, this is one, this is six, four, and five. This is three, two, and one. This is our six. We get our one and three here, and that's our two. Three deep, deep dudes in the corner. That's a two, that's a three, that's a one. Okay, let's clean up the one, two here. This is three and two. This is a one. All right, now we should be able to plonk some digits here. Ah, three has to be next to six. That should help. This this is five and four, and that's six, just by Sudoku here. Um, so the ah, this can't be a four, because it's next to a two. So this has to be the five. This is four. This I was gonna say these are four or five pairs, but then I realized it had to disambiguate. Uh this is our four, and then this is five and this is six, and we're suddenly done. Very nice. All right, that was a neat puzzle, Randall. I liked how we were able to color the entire grid first, and then we were able to propagate some numbers based on restrictions, uh, our Dorito restrictions. And then finally, the black dot came in clutch to, to disambiguate. So I'm sure that was your plan, and it worked out great because that's exactly how my path went. Very nice. All right. Well, definitely on the harder side. Um, you have to know, a, a, I have a lot of experience with German Whispers, so I'm sure Randall wasn't concerned about me being able to do it. But the concern is if you aren't familiar with German Whispers, there's a lot of insights that you need to sort of put together. Uh, and and so hopefully this added some tools to your toolbox, uh, at least watching my solve, and uh, should make future German Whispers a bit easier that uh, follow this form. The other thing you could have done is just arbitrarily picked one to be low and one to be high. And if you were wrong, the black dot wouldn't have worked out and you just go back and pick the other. That is a perfectly viable way of solving these. <laughs> um, as long as you're aware that you need to go back and prove the other one doesn't work if you happen to guess right. Anyway, um, you could also ignore the black dot for as long as possible using using digits. But yeah, anyway, 
Um, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, then why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.